Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Welcome in. Welcome in to Higher Ground Christian Church. Good morning. I'm Pastor James Ziegler. Welcome to Higher Ground Christian Church. Good to have you this morning. Listen, uh, we have a vision statement, which is Colossians 3, 1 and 2. It says, if then you have been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And, and set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things on this earth. I wholeheartedly believe in that. And uh, I'm going to be talking somewhat about that today. Uh, this is a real deep communication and conversation that I'm about to have. So this sermon, I want you to really pay attention to. Before we do that, let's pray. Lord, I thank you now for this day, God. I thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy and your kindness for waking us up this morning, putting us in our right mind. Uh, God, giving us a heart and a mindset to serve and to hear your word, God. Help us to be better at in, in all situations, all circumstances of our life. Touch us and, and lead us in the right way. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Listen, this this is a this is a good one, and I, I want you to hear it real good. If you if you don't usually pay attention to the sermon, at least at least get some of this today, because this is something I really want to share with a lot of people. Today I'm coming from uh, the book of Psalm uh, and Psalms uh, 34, 17 through 19. Uh, if you have your Bibles or if you have your phone, I, I want you to read along with me. Uh, this is coming from the NIV though. If you're in the King James, uh, just read it along with me. Psalms chapter 34, verses 17, it says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them all from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. <clears throat> the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Today, my title is is, is based around suicide. God can deliver you from it all. Suicide. God, God can deliver you from it all. Let me, let me read the scripture again, and then we're going to move on. Psalms chapter 34, verses 17 through 19. NIV says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. We're talking about suicide. God can deliver you from it all. Listen, today this sermon is geared around those who think they have had enough. I'm sick of this. And they just can't go on. They just like, I, I, I don't want to be here. I, I don't want to live here no more. I don't want to be around this no more. I don't want to be around nobody. This sermon is delivered in encouragement, listen to me, not to bash no, nobody, not to say what you're doing wrong, not to say what you're doing. This is delivered in encouragement to keep living and watch God make a way. Keep living. He's going to turn things around for you soon enough, but, but you can't take it in your own hands. Listen, there are many in this world who are, who are going through the toughest times in their life. It ain't just you. It ain't just me. There are many people going through the toughest times of their life. If you look over in Israel right now, some people are going through the toughest times of their life. They probably ain't never been through nothing like that before. They don't know where to go or who to turn to for an answer. So, so now they start to spiral out of control mentally. Listen to me good. Some, some equate this to be mental illness. Or, or mental health problems. And, and I want you to know that mental health is another form of sickness in the body. This ain't just like cancer. I mean, it, it, you, we talk about cancer. We talk about high blood pressure. We, we can talk about liver disease. We can talk about having all these different things in our body. Mental illness is also a sickness that will break the body down. I hope you hear me good. This sermon came about um, from a conversation I was having with my friend the other day, uh, Miss Erica, and she called me because she asked me 
how I got through a real hard time in my life when I was going through something really hard. She was, and so she was asking me, she said, she was asking because she had, she, she had just informed me about two people that were close to her that committed suicide. And, and, and one was in their thirties and, and one was in their forties. And then, then I had another friend just over here in my house yesterday, one of my workers, and he was explaining to me how this 25 year old young black man had hung himself that, that he worked with. I, I, I know his, his cousin and his uncle and all of them. And he explained this to me. And, and, and I explained to them that, that earlier this week, uh, a young lady had died where I worked from a drug overdose. And, and she was only in her thirties. So here it is. This, this really made me think about some things. It, it brought a lot of light to some things. And so she was asking me, how did you make it through? How, how, how did you do it? How, how did you get through the roughest part of your life? And I want to explain that in a little bit. I, I want to tell you though, when I was growing up, I, I don't think people had as many mental issues as we do today. I, I just don't feel like there were so many people that had it. Now, 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 hold on. I know some of you would say, well, that's not true, preacher. They were there, but it just had not been diagnosed in those times. Nobody knew it. Well, I get that, but I still disagree. And let me tell you why. Because there seems to be more children in this day and time that's, that, that seem to have some sort of mental issue than I've ever seen in my lifetime. I've never seen so many kids all at one time having some sort of mental issue, breakdowns and depression and stress than I've ever seen in my life. Even, even in, in my growing up, even in my poorness and not having all that we needed, I still didn't see a bunch of people as depressed and, and stressed and, and, and angry walking around wanting to kill themselves. And listen, I, I come from the place just like some of y'all. Uh, it, it, it was what they would call the ghetto, the hood place. And I had some of the funnest times in my life. I, I mean, I, I just never thought about none of the stuff that was going around me. Sure, people died, people got killed. Sure, it was some, some people depressed. I, I did, I saw some people, I saw some people upset, but not to this extent. Yeah, there were kids who were depressed and even some that were bullied and, and some that just felt like, you know, they feel wanted. They didn't feel wanted in this world. But, but when you look at today's time, there are many of those kind of children living amongst us now. Some of them just they, they just don't feel wanted. Some of them feel like they're being they feel depressed about how they're living. And I want you to know that there are many forms of mental illness. There's not just one particular one. But we must recognize the signs in order to help someone. Y'all hear me? We gotta, we gotta recognize the signs in order to help someone. Uh, we can't help people if we don't know what to look for. It, it, you know, as a preacher, it's easy for us to just get up and preach uh, about salvation all the time, you know, because everybody needs it. We can preach about sin because we know everybody's sin. So, so that's just one blanket where we just preach and they think, but mental illness, you have to know what you're looking for. So, so as I was talking to my sister, my good friend Erica, and I talked to my my cousin, uh, Pastor Vincent Broomfield, and and, and they they're having something at their church uh, this this month called awareness because this month is supposed to be cancer awareness month, and and we're talking about all awareness uh, for health. So so here are a few of the signs that we should be looking for. I'm gonna give you just a few. I'm not, a, I wanna tell you now, so don't nobody try to sue me. I, I'm not a professional in this field. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I have not gone to school to study upon this type of stuff, but I'm coming from a biblical point of view and some of the information that was sent to me concerning this. So, so here are a few things we need to be looking for. When you see some people, some people not wanting to get up out of their bed, they they just don't want to get up. They don't want to get up. They won't take a bath. They won't take the brush their teeth. And and I'm not saying people that can't. I'm talking about people that are physically able to get up, take a bath, but they don't want to get up. They they don't want to move. 
I, I was watching a movie like that the other day where uh, a woman's husband, uh, boyfriend left him and stole all the money. Then she got depressed and she started drinking and she just laid around in the bed all the time. And her daughter, the, the, her daughter had to jump into an adult role to take over for where the mother was in a depressed mood. So here it is. They don't want to brush their teeth. They don't want to get out of bed and when they're able. And But their mind has got them in a mental state of depression. And we need to pay attention to that when people just don't want to get out of bed. And then, then the flip side of that, we have some people that will get out of bed. And, and they'll brush their teeth and take a bath, but they don't want to be associated with nobody in the world. They don't want to talk to nobody. They don't want to see nobody. They don't want to be bothered. They don't like people. They just don't want to be around. That's a different form of mental illness. It, it, we need to watch out for people who, who change their music. You know how people, you know, some people, they, they've always listened to gospel all their life. No problem. They, they always listen to smooth R&B or jazz. But now they start listening to aggressive music that, 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 that words that hone into uh, demonic ways. You need to watch up this. And, and, I, and, you know, me being a musician, I talk about this all the time. People in the music they listen to and what gets in your spirit. We got to be careful. So we have to watch people with that. People having difficulty in school where, where it ain't that they're not smart enough. It ain't that they ain't got it. They just don't want to be there. Or uh, their, their mind is somewhere else. It's in a stressful situation. I'm talking about kids and, and young adults nowadays. And, and listen, we need to pay attention. Here's another one about mood swings and their changes. Like, like when they're angry all the time. When when they're unable to express their emotions, and then you start thinking about it, they're not interested in their usual activities. They're not that same fun, fun person they used to be, not, not willing to smile anymore, not willing to sh show love anymore. They've changed their swing, their mood swings. And another one that you need to pay attention to is when, when people are always discussing death. Or, or, or their quality of life more frequently. Now they're, they're talking about it all the time. You know, well, you know, I wonder what death is like. Oh, you know what? You know, I, I don't know. I, just, it don't seem right here. You know, the people here, they, I mean, I should move somewhere else because where they look, no, nah, nah. when you start hearing that type of stuff, these people are going through some, some illnesses and mentally, maybe depression or stress. It, it, here it is, another one where, people putting themselves in, in risky situations where, where they're starting arguments that don't need to be started. They're having confrontations that don't need to be uh, not even worthy of, of the communication. And then they have these activities that lead to police involvement. They're, 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 they're moving off the grid. They're, they're, their mindset uh, is, is, somewhere where, where they're getting off track. If, if you see somebody that's always irritable over small things and don't want to talk or, or they isolate themselves, especially, especially when it comes to weekends, you know, some people, they can be active at, at work and, and all that, but on the weekends, they don't, they, not that they just want to relax and they don't want to be dealing with people because they really don't want to be around people. They're working, trying to figure out what their intentions are. And then, and then here's another one. And that, that most people should know about when, when people start increasingly having substance abuses, they start doing it more. I'm talking about alcohol. I'm talking about weed. I'm talking about these kids on Molly, Molly's, uh, 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 they call it ecstasy. Uh, people on Percocets, that oxycodone. And then and some of the old school people still don't crack in cocaine. And, and, and for Molly's, if you don't know, it's the MDMA, methylena dioxymethamphetamine, and, and that's the medical term of it. People are doing these type of things and don't know how strong it is. The young lady that uh, uh, we found dead in her apartment on Monday had died from Percocets, just oxycodone, in the apartment by herself. And, and she was dead for about five days until somebody, until we found her. And all because her mother called and asked us to do a wellness check on her. 
she had isolated herself from people she had moved away she was in the depression and now here it is she's taking some drugs that's stronger than what she ever had because drugs are different nowadays y'all don't know what they're putting in them Never mind. i'm not i'm not here to talk about that i want to stay on suicide because i, I want to tell you people that are overdosing on that's another form of suicide they, they didn't kill themselves in a certain way, but that's another form. I, I want to give you some numbers here, too. Back in 1999, do you know 20,000 people overdosed on some sort of drug? It was about 16,000 men and about 4,000 women. That's in 1999, 20,000 people. Uh, let's fast forward. In 2021, 120,000 people overdosed on some sort of drug. 80,000 men and 40,000 women. Now, this is why I'm saying, yeah, back in my day, it wasn't that many. It's growing. Yeah, maybe it wasn't as prevalent and and and, and, and they didn't know how to uh, uh, really uh, talk about what it is that people are having. But no, I'm telling you, you looking at the numbers, they grew. 100,000 more people overdosed from 1999 to 2021. And, and listen, I want you to know mental sickness is more than just seeing people walking down the street talking to themselves. Yeah. I, I see, we see it all the time. But listen, at least th those people are out and about and they walking around, they, they, they talking, ain't no telling what they may be, but who knows, they possibly could run into somebody that could help them and change their mindset. They out, they getting their life together. But those who keep things bottled up inside. They look normal like you and I. Walking around, you, you would never think it. And they never seek help. Those are the ones that we need to pay attention to. Because it, it, in, 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 our, in our culture, in, in our in ethnicity of Black people, we don't want to go talk to nobody. And my cousin was saying this other day when we were growing up, you know, it was that thing. Hey, what go on in this house, stay in this house. And I get that to a certain extent. I understand. I get it. But who do you go talk to if you don't have a counselor in your house and some things are going through your mind? We have to think back on these things to help people. Even on my job now, you know, uh, you know, it, it, they have programs like, hey, if you feel in this kind of way, We'll let you go talk to somebody. Let, let me give you some more statistics real quick, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to jump off this. Statistics. Over four times as many people died by suicide in 2019 than in an alcohol-related motor vehicle. Four times as many people died by suicide than alcohol-related vehicles. Listen, 49% of firearm deaths are from suicide. 49% of firearm deaths are from suicide. We think folk are running around here shooting each other out. It's more, almost more people killing themselves than other folks shooting each other. Let me give you another number. 63% of all suicides were by firearms, 63%. Between 2014 and 2019, the rates of suicide among black people increased by 30% in the US. You remember when I was younger, when we was younger, it, it just was almost a taboo to hear black people killing themselves. We just, we just did, it, it wasn't really, it, I mean, we may have heard one person or so, but it, it wasn't something that you hear. Now you hear it all the time. And then drug overdose, um, the drug overdose mortality rate increased by 44% in black Americans in 2020. I, listen, I, I, I don't even have the numbers from when the pandemic happened. 21 and 22. I don't even have those numbers. I'm talking about in 2020, the drug overdose mortality rate increased by 44% in Black Americans. Oh, uh, I, I can't wait until I get some numbers for 21 and 22. Here, here it is. Five reasons why suicide is on the rise. Y'all want to know what they are? Can I give them to you? Let me tell you what the number one reason that they have for suicide social media social media ramps up pressure to fit in to want to be like other people to look like other people and and, and my cousin was said and, and some of these people are living a lie anyway they ain't even living what you think they live and they just showing you a clip 
of their life. Not the full thing when they get over there. Oh, they get on there. Hey, we over in uh, Aruba. We over in Aruba. And then they get off and, and they trying to figure out how they going to get home because they didn't waste all their money and, and, and they don't know. They, they, they can't buy nothing. You don't know what the situation is. So number one, everybody say social media. social media. That's what it is. See, I guess back in my day, we didn't, of course, we didn't have social media like that. So we didn't see other people doing stupid stuff and 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 thinking that the, the biggest way to, to get numbers on social media is to flip a water bottle and make it land on, on, on the right side. Of, and, and we think that stuff is interesting. Uh, water challenges. We take that kind of stuff to eating uh, hot peppers. And see, we didn't have now we see stupid stuff and want to do stupid stuff. And then when things happen to us in our mind, then then we want to kill ourselves. I'm talking about suicide, but I'm telling you, God can deliver you from it all. Number two, number one is social media. Number two, mental health stigma impedes black people from seek seeking help. The stigma of even thinking that something is wrong with me, I, I ain't going to see nobody. Uh, uh, I ain't got, uh, I ain't got time. Now. They don't even know me. You know, I ain't going to. That that is is it's almost like snitching in in the hood. You know what I'm saying? People be like, oh, oh, you don't snitch. How are we gonna get our neighborhoods better if we don't say what the problem is and how we get it fixed? Same thing with mental issue. If you don't go to see what the problem is, then how are you going to get it fixed? Number three, number three, treatment is often less accessible to black people. We Black people usually don't have the funds to go sit down and talk to a doctor for, at $150 uh, an hour. $300 uh, for, for two hours. You know, it, 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 it's, it's kind of hard. It's, it's not accessible. So, so it, there are less counselors now in the world that help in this situation. We have more people with mental issues and less people that can help them with it. Number four, black people continue to face racism and discrimination. I, I don't deny that. I think that's very true. I think they're right on point uh, that black people are gonna continue to face racism no matter what we're going through, discrimination, suicide is on the rise. But God can deliver you from it all. I'm telling you. So here are the five things again. Uh, number five is say many black people are so exposed to violence that death is not a factor anymore to them. They ain't scared of that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, their mind mentally is so much in the depression, they don't care about dying. So let me give you the five reasons that suicide is on the rise again. Social media the pressure to try to fit in, mental health stigma from black people and not wanting to seek help because we don't want people in our business. Number three, treatment is often less accessible because we can't afford it all the time, $150 an hour. Number four, black people continue to face racism and discrimination. And number five, many black people are so exposed to violence that death is not even a factor to them anymore. So here we are, we got suicide on the rise. And we have people that are overdosing on the rise. And, 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 and I have so many people that have told me stories about people that are killing themselves. And, and, and these people are under 30 years old. Let, let, me, let, me, let me give you some more statistics real quick. Listen to this. Self-reported suicide attempts for Black adolescents rose by 73% between 1991 and 2017. 73%? A, a, a black adolescence, that means kids, younger folk, self-reported suicide attempt. They have attempted to kill themselves. 73% arise from 1991 to 2017. This is why I say they wasn't that big back when I was growing up. We, we didn't have all this. Let me give you another statistic. Black boys will attempt suicide more than black girls who have an ideation of doing it. What do you mean, preacher? It's not that black girls don't think about killing themselves. Some do, and some carry it out. But they won't carry it out as black boys will. And the next one, black boys are engaged in more lethal means when attempting suicide than black girls, which have increased. Get this number. It's increased by 122% between 1997 and 2017. 
black boys killing themselves lethally has risen by 122%. I was telling my friend, I said, well, you know, because when I was growing up, you know, girls that would try to kill themselves, they would do something like take a whole bunch of uh, Tylenol or something like that and, and try to, you know, uh, or overdose on that. And then somebody would catch them, pump their stomach and their lip. Uh, or they're, they're trying to cut their wrist or something to try to cut a vein. Somebody catch them in the bathroom, bandage them up. Young men are shooting themselves. They killing themselves or hanging themselves. Uh, it, it, it increased 122% between 1997 and 2017. Next statistic. Black boys are twice as likely to die by suicide as white youth. Now, that's a sad situation. I, I I used to think about it differently all the time. Oh, white people do that. Oh, not no more. Black boys are twice as likely to die by suicide as a white youth. And the crazy thing is now we live better. This is what's crazy to me. We live better. We have more. We look nicer. We dress nice. We have good money. We have more than enough to live, and it seems that kids still can't relate to Paul's testimony. What do you mean, preacher, Paul's testimony? They can't relate to Paul's testimony. Y'all remember in Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, this is what Paul said in the NIV. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I, I know what it is to be in need. I do. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. This is what Paul said. Whether, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. 13, he said, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. In the King James Version, it said, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. See, we living better, but we ain't teaching our kids about this type of stuff. See, I think we tend to download too many things into a child's mind in this day and time. What do you mean by that, preacher? We forget that they are, are not mature enough to handle some of the things that adults handle. What do you mean? And, you know, some kids be like, I, I know what I did. But, but. No, they don't. We think we should tell them everything concerning adulthood so they can make decisions for themselves. What? So they can make decisions for themselves? We got kids out here trying to figure out their own sexuality and changing their bodies and stuff before they even mature enough to know what they did. And now they didn't make this and they probably gonna wanna change it later on. Well, well, I can tell you that trying to make let a child make a decision for themselves is wrong thinking because this is not what the Bible instructs us to do. If, if we're able to handle the, if kids were able to handle things that adults are able to handle, then God would have made them born as adults. Hey, when you're born, you're just coming out as a grown person, not as children to be led, not as children to be led. Children are children so they can be led. I'm going to tell you this. I never sat around my mama and discussed her childhood when I was a child. Mama, tell me what you did in high school. Tell me. No. Asking questions. I just I just wanted to be a child. I didn't ask her about what bills she paying and blah. No, I just was a child. I, 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 I let her lead me in the path that I should go. So when I got old, I wouldn't depart from it. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's places in life to train children about certain things, but don't put so much pressure on them, kind of like social media they already have. We're wondering why they, they're so depressed. We're like, what is wrong with you? We live in battle. We got a house. We got cover. What's wrong with you? They're looking at other people, and then they're seeing what we're doing. But Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way we should go. He should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The key word is train, not let them make decisions for them. Train. The reason they killing themselves is because we ain't trained them. We letting them think that it's okay to do what you want to. 
Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. But here it is, verse 4, this is what we all always miss. Fathers, do not aspirate. Exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What, what, what did you read, preacher? Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Let me read number four again. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and, and instruction of the Lord. See, the problem is we are not training our children anymore. We are allowing them to figure it out. And most of the time, when they're trying to figure it out, they're going to make the wrong decision. Yeah, and listen, yes, I understand. Uh, but preacher, that's a good way for them to learn for themselves. Yeah, yeah, it is. If you keep telling them the stove is hot and they touch the stove, that's a good lesson. But killing yourself is not. We have to tell them, listen, trust in the Lord. Yeah, they'll learn from some of the decisions, but there are some decisions they won't be able to come back from. There's some kids in, in jails and in, in prisons right now that they did some stupid stuff when they were 13 and 14 that they'll never be able to take back. All because it wasn't a parent there to train them. No, don't do this. No, do this. No, live like this. But if we would have at least told them which way to go, then they may not have made the, that particular decision. And, and I'm not going to put it all on the parents. I know social media has a lot to do. It. I know that schools have a lot to it. Let, let, me, let me tell you what exasperated, exasperated is when it says fathers do not exasperate your children. Exasperate, I looked it up in the, in the dictionary. It, it says to irritate and frustrate intensely. Now, in the King James Version, it says fathers do not provoke your children to wrath. Now, listen, it's a difference. I don't want nobody to get this confused, like, oh, yeah, my kids, uh, they be well, they be mad at me because I had to whoop them or, or I made them. I ain't talking about that stuff. I'm talking about leading them into wrath. Have you ever thought about what it means to provoke someone to wrath, to provoke someone to wrath, to provoke someone to irritate and frustrate intensely? Most parents don't do that. We ain't after our kids to provoke them to be mad. Now, when they do stuff, you got to correct them. And so don't get that confused with correction. The definition of wrath is extreme anger. If you think about this deeply, if you think about this, this is another form of mental illness. When people are walking around angry, anybody who cannot control their anger has a mental problem to me that needs to be addressed. If you can't control your anger, something's wrong. And we can't teach our kids to be angry. You know why? Ecclesiastes 7 and 9 says, I love this scripture. I used to teach it all the time to kids. It says, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rested in the bosom of fools. Everybody say fools. It's, it's too many out here. There's too many people out here acting like fools because they have some angriness going on because their parents weren't there or they're not teaching them and they're not leading them in the right way. And what's happening today is we're allowing this generation to be raised with an angry spirit. I also believe that we provoke our kids to wrath by allowing them to experience adult things while they are kids. What do you mean, preacher? Oh, oh we allow them uh, to look at TV with you when you watching certain things that you know they shouldn't be watching. No, no, okay, yeah, they may see it later on, but they, they ought not be watching it with you. No, no, don't watch that kind of stuff when you were a kid. All right, let, let me give you another thing. I said this earlier, we, we allow them to make decisions about their sexuality and make drastic decisions before they are even mature enough to know what they want to become. No, no, I understand. Everybody has a feeling. Oh, I feel this way, blah, blah, blah. But in five years from now, you may not feel that same way. But no, we let them go ahead and make a decision drastically that they can't come back from. We allow them to try small, uh, small, low damaging things like, like low drugs, like uh, weed and, and, and cursing and, and, and watching TV shows that's not for kids. And then we wonder how they started acting like they do. We, 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 and, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I know they, they can learn a lot of, of these things at school, but just 
that doesn't mean that those kids uh, that are at the school need to be the ones training your your children. You ought to teach them the right way. And the kids that are uh, that your kids are looking at at school, they haven't been taught right in their own home. And I can't say everybody loves the Lord. I can't. I understand that. So yeah, it, it's you're on the fence when you're sending your kids to school uh, about what they're going to pick up and bring home. Don't, and listen, don't get me wrong. I'm going to soon get to the point about how how how, how we can rectify this and and how I got out of, my, out of my situation. But briefly, real quick, back to the children. If if we are trying to teach them things that adults do and put them on the level of grown people when their mind has not fully developed, then they are going to have some extreme mental issues. Now, now I'm not saying that it will happen to all the children. I'm not saying that. But in this day and time, there are a whole lot more who are trying to think for themselves about adult decision and, and what they see on social media and they aren't ready for, but, but they cannot relate to something they should not have to deal with. Even when, when you're younger, you remember when you were younger, we allow them to try whatever uh, they wanted and, and then wonder why they can't seem to relate to everyday life. What do you mean, preacher? You remember when we, uh, we don't mind giving our kids a sip of alcohol when they're young to try it? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, and don't nobody get mad tripping. I'm not saying that alcohol is going to send nobody to hell. That's not what I'm saying. So get off of that. I'm saying you're setting them up to possibly overindulge in something that you gave them and then turn around and be frustrated about how, how it turns out and how they're living now off of this certain thing. This is, a, this is a form of provoking them to wrath on your children, but we don't see it that way. If we allow them to smoke and try, oh, try a cigarette, try a black and mouth. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that smoking is going to send you to hell. So don't be tripping about that. What I'm saying is you've allowed them to start something that could be addicted for them. And then it's going to be hard to get away from, even though you got away from it, you stopped it. Who's to say that they will? Instead of teaching them about those type of things, about these worldly things, smoking and drinking, and it's okay to do this and all right, why not teach them Bible solutions about their lives? You know why? Because we wasn't taught. And here I am, I'm going to try to teach it to you. Like 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 7, it said, don't you know, it, it, what if we taught our kids this? Don't you know that your, yourselves uh, are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in your midst. If anyone, listen to me good. What, what are we talking about? What's the title of my sermon? Suicide? Somebody say suicide. Okay. It, it, number 17 says, if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred. Everybody say sacred. And, and you together are that temple L let me go back because because it, it, don't you know that you yourselves are god's temple and that god's spirit dwells in your midst if anyone destroys god's temple god will destroy that person for god's temple is sacred and you together are that temple that's first corinthians 3 16 through 17 now i i'm trying to tell you that we, we need to explain to our kids who God is inside of them. And what they are carrying is precious and sacred. We cannot allow them to destroy the temple of God. You know why? It says if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. I, I, I Listen, I know what you're saying. Preacher, it's not that easy. We have to let them live their lives. We we, we got to let them have fun. I mean, you 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 too harsh. No. All right, let me let me get back to the scripture real quick. First Corinthians chapter three. Here's verse eighteen and nineteen. It says, "Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolish in God's sight." So what you thinking, it's okay to let them go do this and that. It's foolish in God's sight. And then here in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, it says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? 
whom you have received from God. You are not your own. Listen, I, I know this is hard, y'all. I know it is. I'm trying to teach you something so you can help somebody else. I know we don't want to talk about these types of things in church, but when the funeral comes up of somebody who committed suicide and, and, and concerning this suicide, we don't even know what to say. Preachers are walking around like, oh, you know what? We'll see him in heaven and all that. And we don't know that. Listen, I, I can't lie to you and tell you that I know everybody that's going to go to heaven. But what I can say is God is not going to be pleased with it. You don't want to hear me. Okay. I know. I've been to a funeral where somebody committed suicide. I, I see that we try to do the same thing and we don't know what to say. When we're, it, it's hard because we ain't been teaching it this way. Be careful what you do with God's temple. When I was younger, the preacher would just say, hey, if you kill yourself, you're going to hell. That was simple. I don't want to say that nowadays because I, I, you don't know who's going to heaven and hell, but I do know that God is won't be pleased with that. Ecclesiastes 7 and 16. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what it says. Do not be over-righteous. Neither be overwise. Why destroy yourself? Do not be over wicked and do not be a fool. Why die before your time? It is good to grasp the one and let go of the other. Whoever fears God will avoid all extremes. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible says, do not die before your time. This means that you are making a decision for God when in turn, it, it makes you think that you are being righteous by doing this, by taking your life. Or, or it, it, you think you're being wiser than God to know what you need. Mm, I, I, man, I know this is deep. I'm getting it. But in the end, this is a wicked act that causes you to be foolish and go to the extreme. Go, You go to the extreme. You didn't kill yourself. What are you saying? I'm saying, what if we started preaching this type of stuff in church? It could help those people. Do you know how many people be sitting in church, be thinking about this all the time, but we don't never bring it up. We just shout and we having a good time playing the music and thinking this is what it is. And then there's people that are, are missing the mark because see, we didn't study. We didn't, we didn't help them. I, I was explaining to my friend that people that commit suicide hurt more than just themselves. I, 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 told, I, was, I, was, I was frustrated when and, and God gave me this sermon. I was frustrated. I, th I think it's so, so uh, they're being selfish. And, and, and she explained, and you know, I, it's not just family and friends that you hurt. You hurt God. And she said to me, well, you're right, preacher, but they aren't thinking that way at the time. They're not thinking that way. The, the mental issue in their mind got them thinking another way. And she was right. So here's my answer for how I made it through all my, my rough times. Y'all ready? I remembered who God is to me. <laughs> I, I remember what my mother taught me when I was a kid and what she taught me about God. I remember Jeremiah 19 and 11 when it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. If you don't keep your mind on God, then you will forget that he already has a plan for you. And, and who are you? to disrupt God's plan by trying to do it yourself. He, he's not trying to harm you, but he, he, he plans for you to, to have hope and a future. I, I believe God when he says this in Isaiah 41 and 10, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What if we were taught and what if we teach our children these types of scriptures when they're young? Then they would have something and someone to trust in when, when trials come. Because believe me, that suicide is of the devil. I want you to know it. 
Suicide is evil. It's of the devil. He wants to destroy anything that belongs to God. He, he even tried to destroy Jesus. You, you, you don't believe me? Here, here look and listen to this. Y'all remember in Matthew chapter four, verses five and six, it said the devil took him up to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple, the highest point. And he said, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Listen to me good. I want you to know Jesus was at his weakest point in his life. The, the, he had fasted. Satan was asking him to throw himself off a mountain. Y'all not here, uh, the, the highest point of this temple. He had just fought, fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And he and, and now he's being tempted by the devil. Y'all hear me? I want you to know that Satan will come at your weakest points in your life. Just like he did me. That's why my friend was asking me about it. He will come at your weakest points in your life. And then he'll tell you to kill yourself. He told Jesus to jump off the mountain. Nobody ever looks at it this way, but he asked him, jump. And he made him believe, oh, if you jump, don't even worry about it. You'll just command the angels concerning you and they'll lift you up in their hands. Your foot won't even get scratched by a stone. But he, Jesus was all human. He was all flesh and all God. He came for a purpose. If he had done that, he would have died. And then he may even tell us sometimes, this is what Satan tells us, that, that you'll get relief from all your life's pressure and God will understand. That Satan has been lying from the beginning. He, he lied to Eve in, in the garden and he was a snake then, he's a snake now. But I want you to know that God will not be very understanding because you didn't depend on him. I'm telling you, if it's in your mind, if Satan is telling you, oh, you're going to be all right, I'm telling you, that's not the truth. Let me tell you why. In Matthew chapter 11 and 28, NIV, Jesus said this, come to me, all you who are uh, weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Don't go trying to do it for yourself. We should be depending on God for our help. And, and we speak with others and, uh, about what they are going through. We should explain to them how God loves them. And if they set their minds on the things above and not on the things on this earth, then God will see them through it and deliver them from them all. Psalms 31 and 15 says, my times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. And I want you to know, yes, Satan is the enemy. And he will always come after God's people, but he does not have authority to win. Y'all hear me? He doesn't have authority to win. So we should not allow him to. He is not the opposite of God because he is not even on God's level to be God's opposite. Satan is, is a created being just like the other angels. He was just kicked out of heaven for his, his, his immoral and, and foolish lying ways. So keep your eyes on the one that can help you through any stress or any depression. For many of us, we, we have all gone through some dramatic situations in our lives. Uh, hey, I, nobody can say, oh, I ain't never been through none. No, no, a lot of us have been through some stuff. But guess what? God has always made a way without the possibility of suicide. That, that's not something that we should even consider. Let's help someone today by leading them back to Christ so they can put their trust in God again and not in themselves. I'm telling you, the way that I made it out was nothing but God. I put my trust in him and I focused on him. And I said, never again will I let a human, any kind of other person, no, nothing will come from not death, not life, like nothing, no, no living creation. It will separate me from the love of God, not even what's what's building up inside my mental mind. 
Now, I had so much more information to give you, uh, but I can't give it all to you. I didn't. I went well over my time. But listen, the reason we preach these sermons is because of Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. I don't just want you saved. Everybody can say they saved. But. I want you to work on your mind. I work on, want you to work on your relationship, with God. I, I want you to see him for who he is and love him for what he's done for you. Can, listen, I, 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 was, I, I wasn't going to do this real quick, but I, I think I'm going to take the time real quick and, and play this real quick. Uh, this is a song I, I want you to hear real quick. And, and, and it's, it's real simple. It does not belong to me, but this is for encouragement. Uh, and, and, and this is by... Uh, Zacardi Cortez. It says, Lord, do it for me. And I, I want him to do it for you. Listen in. Lord, do it for me. Oh, Lord, do it, do it for me. just won't be done so long I need you to do it for me oh thank you Jesus sometime I get this for y'all and I you, say Lord can you fix it for me Anybody know that only God can do it? Only you can fix it for me. That's good. Oh, Lord, I have, yeah, I have a problem that only you can solve. So, Lord. I say it like I mean it. Listen, Lord, do it for me. Oh, Lord, please do it for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen, I'm gonna I'm stop it right there. I love that song quite a bit. I do, uh, and and that's for any of y'all that that need him. Uh, you can go listen to it on your own. I'm way over my time, but uh, Zacardi Cortez, Lord, do it for me. So, for if y'all ever going through some situation like that, just ask him, Lord, do it for me. And I guarantee you, he'll deliver you out of the worst circumstances and situations in your life. He's done it so many times. He's done it for me. And, and so I thank God that my sister even asked me, how, how did you make it out? And then God made a whole sermon out of this thing. Suicide. God can deliver you from it. Y'all hear what I'm, oh man, yeah. God can deliver you from it. I want you to know. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted 
and save those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He can do it for you. He can. If you want to be a blessing, you can give to the uh, Cash App, Money Sign, High Ground, CC. Uh, let me pray for you, and, and I'm going to let you get out of here, and I want you to enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Lord, thank you now for your word. God, let it not have fallen on deaf ears. Let it have helped someone. God, deliver us from that mindset of suicide or doing things to our temple, God, that uh, don't please you, God. Let us remember who we're living for and who's in the inside of us, which is you and your Holy Spirit. Let us walk around knowing that you love us enough not to do anything to the extreme god that's not in your plans god and we know that suicide is not in your plan god i'm asking you to change these numbers around where they're grown in suicide and 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 and, and god in in drugs and and overdoses god i'm asking you turn those numbers around and let people turn back to you god forgive us god for our selfish and worldly ways we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, and I thank you for it, God. Let this sermon move out to the people that someone may hear it and be encouraged, God, to put their trust in you. I give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Listen, please be blessed. What am I celebrating? Huh? Oh, 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 God, I almost forgot about my daughter's birthday. Uh, Jada's birthday uh, turned 18 today. One of my daughters, I, I was so into the word of the Lord. I, you got to tell me, remind me, give me a paper or something. We're praying for her. Pray for my daughter, God, that my youngest turned 18 today. And so I thank God for all of my kids. Uh, listen, be, uh, be a blessing to someone. Let's look out for those signs uh, of people in depression. Let's see if we can help them. Enjoy the rest of your day. And you have a wonderful day and a rather free week. I'll be back Tuesday to go back over this as well. If you want some of this information. God bless you. You have a good day. Uh -huh.